Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. It's another of our photo analyses and this month we put it out to our patrons again to choose from one of the photos that we've actually got in the collection of the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. So one of the originals, so we believe it's unpublished. Um, we, we put these up somewhere in France, 1916. Machine Gun Platoon, the 2nd Battalion Dorset Reg Dorsetshire Regiment in 1927. Look at all these accessories uh, running along the front here. Really interesting. Could have got into some detail there. Royal Air Force training. Don't know very much about that. 1st Battalion Hampshire Regiment, Rusmac, 1931. Some great names and everything on this photo. Again, could have talked a little bit about the accessories that were being shown and the guns themselves, uniforms, etc. And then the Gurkhas and Pack Saddlery in 1934. So, yeah, again, lots of detail in here. We're massive fans of Pack Saddlery, so we'd have got stuck into that one. But the results were a little bit different than we expected. People decided that because we'd provided the least information about the Royal Air Force training, that's what they wanted us to explain. It's probably one of the mo most opaque photos, so the least information about Royal Air Force use of the Vickers as well. Uh, and as a result, 45% chose that. And, uh, you know, Gurkhas and Pax Adlery were running second. People didn't like the photos of the... Uh, of the uh, group photos so we might pick those ourselves in the future because we think there's some value to uh, to explain some of these and perhaps a more regimental value to, to, to explain in those as well so they might be specials um, and somewhere in France obviously great war machine gunnery uh, you know always gets a bit of interest there's some great stuff in there the 08 pattern webbing and the 1914 pattern equipment mix as well uh, we've got the number eight belt boxes or number six uh, number six belt boxes in use as well so yeah we could have got stuck into that but no you decided uh, or our patrons decided which hopefully is some of you uh, please do join if it's not to choose this Royal Air Force training photo so let's get stuck into it it shows uh, Royal Air Force students uh, being trained on the Vickers machine gun and uh, interestingly enough they're being trained on the Mark 1 Vickers machine gun here this uh, unlike the later Mark 1 star the barrel casing is not louvered on a Mark 1 star you'd see sort of louvers here and here and this end cap would have holes in it as well and that's to enable it to be air cooled rather than water cooled but they kept Mark 1 water cooled guns in place because it meant that they could do ground firing uh, they could fire them on the range and they wouldn't have the concerns of overheating that they would when they're in the air so they fitted it with the air to air sights though so you've got a single bead and then a ring so a ring and bead sight uh, that is you know it's being used on the ground like that sometimes in the air and certainly in the great war you see uh, telescopes or or optical sights or sight tubes being used to make sure that the uh, the sighting is easier while you're flying along um what's worth saying though that these this seems to be late nine, 1920s um thanks to andrew muggleton for helping me out just identify some of the basics around the uniform in place uh you know they've got their um close-up collars there for the other ranks uniform uh and yeah, apparently the eagles uh indicate that date as well so the late 1920s the Vickers would remain in service for aircraft, though. The, the, the water-cooled Vickers uh, would remain in service for aircraft right up until the 1930s, until you see wing-mounted um, machine guns in which the Brownings were more suited. But the, the water-cooled Vickers, you know, it's it's the same as the ground gun. But there are some, let's say, you've got these, the, the, uh, the bead and ring sight, which means that you don't need the tangent sight, which you can see is just missing. Uh, you know, normally you'd see that running down there, so there's no tangent sight there. And because of the difficulties of, of, of cocking the weapon in the in the aeroplane, um, you have a, a larger, and I think this is it from the other side, so you'd have a, a handle, an A-type loading handle. You can just see there uh, the, the end of it. So that, so you can, you can, crank the handle uh, a little bit easier um say a little bit easier rather than reaching over to pull back the crank handle from 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 the crank handle knob because when you're in an aircraft this is going to be uh, potentially your eye line is going to actually be down here so you don't want to be reaching up and over to fire it 
so that so they've left that um highland i think it is h-y-l-a-n-d loading handle uh fitted on there and you had type a and type b because one one enabled you to pull it uh and one actually came out down here uh, with the handle that enabled you to push it so you would push the crank push this handle this way and it would mean that the crank handle went back um so yeah different different mechanisms for using the aircraft of vickers in an aircraft we've got the standard mark one strip type belt being used here rather than the disintegrating ink link that would be used in the aircraft obviously a trailing fabric belt isn't great when you've got propellers and mechanism and and perhaps just the pilot that would be distracted by that uh, and it looks like they're just loading it into a um in, or it's just falling into along with the spent brass or as much of it as possible into an empty small arms ammunition box there you can just see the vii which would indicate 303 mark 7 which would be the type used uh, you can see the the ammunition is uh, in that strip belt there we've got a few gaps i wonder if that's part of the training to induce stoppages um or just to ensure that people stay into small bursts of ammunition on the range uh, but that's coming out of another ammunition box there as well Let's just uh, zoom out a minute and we can see a little bit more about um, the, oh, before I do, it's worth saying, it's, say it's a Mark 1 gun, uh, you've got the um, normal fusy spring on there, but sometimes that a fusy springs cover, but on the aircraft guns that's often exposed uh, as well. You can see here this cable, I think that's a Bowden remote firing cable, uh, probably being fired off a stick that's just out, out of sight here um so that you you there's no crack there's no cross piece visible so you normally you'd see the handles for the cross piece that you you recognize there's no cross piece visible so it's likely to be being fired from that cable as it would be being fired from the um from the stick for uh you know, when flying the aircraft for a pilot so yeah zooming out what you can see is this here this frame that gives me the impression and the i think that's I can say that's part of it there um, that gives me the impression that this is one of the sort of weighted frames uh, that you'd you'd move the, the a weight backwards and forwards along this pole here to give it a different uh, different effect and, d and it would vary the amount that this would rock so it's a rocker cradle so that it simulates movement in aircraft so when you're on the range and you get used to the vickers you're not just firing square uh it's going to move you around slightly and, and take some of the recut recoil and, and everything like that and you will move so that it tries to simulate being you know being used in in aircraft that little bit more uh next to it though it's worth pointing out this this is the scarf ring that would be used for observers on the back of a plane so uh it's a uh, you know it, this ring here um oh sorry this is the ring and then you've got this u-shaped piece here uh, that goes round that goes up and down on these pieces so you've got quite a lot of elevation quite a lot of sort of vertical movement there um, between sort of zero and what well, that's probably 60 degrees uh, i can't quite remember i think it is actually covered in one of the manuals you've got about 60 degrees of elevation and you've got full 360 movement you don't necessarily want full 360 movement of course because you don't want to be firing uh you know to the front because that's where the pilot is with with these guns but these scarf rings what you can just see on here is the bracket for the lewis gun so that goes around uh, the, uh, the, the the piece on the aircraft Lewis. So the Mark II Lewis guns were, were used to the aircraft, 97 round magazine. Um, and yeah, that, that's what would, the observers would be using. Later replaced by the Vickers uh, gas operated gun, the Vickers K gun, that you're probably familiar with from, our, from some of our videos. Um, the, 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 the springs and the balance and everything for the scarf ring made it incredibly quick to move and incredibly light as well. So easy, quick and easy to move around. Um, it, I think it would be moved by the sort of pressure of the, um, you know, the gunner. Uh, moving around within his seat so he would be able to swing this around quite easily it can be set and, and you know changed uh, on the notch teeth so that you, you you can fix it to a height certainly for traveling um, but it is weighted so it can move quickly oh what else can we tell you about the photo here then um 
Probably not much. It's worth saying that we do have some of the armament training manuals that cover the Vickers. They cover the Lewis. We've got those available on the website to download. I think we've got those available. I think um, 1927 or 28 is one of the last revisions of that. And yeah, they, they may well relate to the practices that we've got here. So if you'd like to learn more about the Vickers in Royal Air Force use, uh, then please go and look at those. It's an area of the website we you know, need to build more of. We're well aware of that. Hopefully we'll have some aircraft Vickers gun stuff to be able to show you in more detail uh, soon, sometime this year. And yeah, we've got a few little bits such as the disintegrating link that you may well have seen from a video so far. And we've got the likes of the, you know, the, there's some stuff that moves from aircraft uh, originally into then ground service or a land service. So if any of you have a Vickers, have a look in the crank. Uh, so open the top cover just like this and inside the crank you are inside that you will see the crank and it holds the lock so you lock up the front here and then you've got the crank handle and then you've got the crank itself now some of those cranks just on the recoiling have a small spring a little clip spring that means that the connecting rod so if you so forgive me for scribbling on the photo but we've got no white space this is your correct connecting rod on the crank what you have is a little spring about here and that means that when uh, you want to change the lock you can do it one-handed and you can put it back in so that's obviously one of the stoppages so they might be tra training that here with the top cover open you never know so you pull back on the crank and you you can you have to reach in and get the lock out now that connecting rod on a normal land service gun just falls back forward again but on an air service gun because of this spring it sticks up and it remains sticking up until you push it back down and that actually ends up being introduced across all land service guns so that you can change the lock you know it sits off the top here um, and it stays up you can change the lock one-handed and it means you haven't got to put your other hand in to lift the connecting rod up much easier to do and thanks to you know the aircraft guns for introducing that um, so there we go let's take all that off uh, and 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 you know, hope you've enjoyed that hope you've learned something from it we will continue to expand royal air force use of the vickers machine gun stuff on the website clearly many of the planes had it right up until the start of the second world war so you know, thank you for watching i hope it's been of interest thank you for watching please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel please support us on patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future i look forward to hearing from you